why did you want to join the military? Why did you want to get involved? Um, it was something that in my family had been a military family. Uh, it was something that I explored when I went to college and got involved in the ROTC program and really took a liking to it and decided this was going to be a part of my, you know, my life. There wasn't a shooting war going on at the time that you joined, but no. in the back of your mind, was it the possibility, did you entertain that possibility, I might be sent into combat someday and then you be training for it? You're always a soldier. You're never not a soldier. So when we knew after 9-11 that the phone was going to ring and you were going to pick up the phone and it was going to be time to leave, leave your work, leave your studies, leave your family, um, and go do your job. And the phone rang, and then it rang again, and then it rang, and then it rang again. So it was of Afghanistan where we served, where uh, a friend of mine had even told me, he said, Howard, it's the time of Christ with cell phones. And in truth, you got up into some of the valleys, and quite truly, there were most of the things that happened on a day-to-day -day -to -day basis had happened the same way a millennia ago. But was combat what you expect? What I would say is no matter what you think it's like, it's not like that. Um, it's not, I was surprised at how much slower some things happened and that once you got into your third or your fourth hour of you know, contact, it became work. You know, it, it was an equation. You understood how to do it. You understood how to move things around. And again, too, I was not, you know, the tip of the spear on that yeah. day. I was trying to move large groups of people. You train and train and train and practice, and it's not until you get into it the first time that you figure out that here are the things that worked, and here's all the things we got to fix. And you come back from that and say, okay, we didn't get anybody killed today. I don't know how that happened but let's do this next time so it's not going to be as close. What did you say was the hardest part of your role there, or the hardest part for you <laughs> during that stuff? Not the problem, uh, not the problem. The situation in which I found myself is that I was an advisor advising advisors. So it's kind of like herding cats with cats. Um, so I'm trying to advise my you know, NATO counterpart who's trying to advise our Afghan counterparts. Um, and we, we, it took us a while to shake out, hey, here's what's really going on. Going into the Andhra Valley, there's nothing but a long stream of women and children and old men on donkeys moving as fast as they could up that valley. And, and talking to your counterparts and saying, hey guys, we're going into it tomorrow. This is gonna be a fight. And I remember my, uh, my NATO counterpart going, what? And I said, They're, bring your guns. You're going to shoot your guns. They're going to shoot back at you. Huh? And I remember turning to my Afghan counterpart and saying, yes. And he said, yes. So, yeah, guys. <laughs> this is where we're going. So, uh, and, but you say, okay, have we done everything that we can? Are we prepared? All right, let's go. What gets you through those things for the entire seven months? What kept you going? Um, the mission, uh, but also turning around to your folk, you know, turning around to the guys on the team and just saying, guys, let's do this smart. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to be cavalier about this, but we're in a dangerous place. I can't, I would love to tell you that everything's going to be fine, but there's a reason that before you leave the gate, you put on 65 pounds of body armor and weapons and cocoon yourself inside this large metal somewhat bomb proof box it's because you're not in a safe place and don't ever think it's safe don't lull yourself into that um, because that's when you'll get into trouble so we would occasionally have to sometimes the scary incidents got you back to realizing hey we need to get we need to get back into the good habits how do you look back on the whole experience in um, There are times that you miss. You know, there, there, there are some things where you feel that. It's hard, I think, sometimes for veterans to explain how they look back at some of these horrendous experiences and still have a feeling of, I wish I was still there. Um, 
the singularity of purpose, that there's the mission. And the mission is the mission. And there is nothing that you do that isn't focused on the mission. You're not worried about commuting to and from work, and you're not worried about this, you're not worried about that. You're worried about getting the mission done.